Hey, Paul here for Retro Gaming Arts, and in this Solder Basics series, we've covered the basics of a circuit, the tools you'll need, some techniques on how to solder, and then today we're going to be covering desoldering. It's something that you do very, very, very frequently, especially with through hole applications, and I'm going to show the tools to make your life easier with some techniques and tips on how to desolder. So let's go take a look at the tools. So these tools are kind of situational. You use different ones based upon the situation. You have the solder pump, which needs new tips because they wear out. Then you also have solder wick, which is after you remove the component, you can wipe it, wipe the solder off. And then you have the engineer SS02 solder sucker. And this you use, this is the one I use all the time because it just works for very general applications. And then this is a brand new one. And you see how vigorously the pump comes out. And then on the used one, it's a little slower. They wear out. So let's go take a look at the soldering pump. I've, I've used multiple, multiple of these and they typically work pretty well for quite some time. Uh, you usually have to replace the tips because the biggest hiccup with these is the tips don't always heat up the solder all the way enough to melt all of it so you can suck it through. Now, these I find that you kind of have to push down really hard and that's kind of how you have to work it is pushing down really hard to make sure that you melt the solder. Move it in circles around whatever you're trying to desolder to melt it all around to suck it up. The solder sucker with the pump works, I find it to work best if you're uh, desoldering a large chip that has about, you know, 20 to 40 different pins all located right next to each other. So you can kind of rapid fire go. It won't remove all of the solder and it won't do it perfectly but it'll get a big chunk of solder off in a short period of time. And you kind of have to learn how to work with that tool specifically, like I said earlier. The Engineer SSO2 Solder Sucker. In my opinion, this is the best desoldering tool that I've ever used. You just use an iron to heat up what you're trying to desolder, place the solder sucker on it, press the pump, and it removes it, removes the solder. Uh, it has great suction, better than most pumps, and then it has a little bit of a tip that when you push it to the iron, it will not melt. The only problem is sometimes uh, dried solder gets stuck in that tip and you'll have to manually remove it, but it's no big deal. Now, anybody can, like I always say, anybody can do this, anybody, no matter what, it's just uh, a little bit of the knowledge helps and a little tips will help to make it easier like this one right here. If what you're trying to desolder isn't coming loose, add a little bit of solder to it and the hot solder that you add will help to melt everything. And now some of the joints, the through hole pin will still be stuck to a corner and then that you're gonna have to wiggle that a little later on. But you see how adding the solder completely melts everything and then you can put the, like, the silicone tip on the iron and it won't it won't heat the tip and it just helps you so you can suck it off better. As you see, the Engineer SSO2 solder sucker from Japan is just so much easier and I highly, highly recommend using these. They're relatively little more on the expensive side but if you're going to be doing a lot of desoldering, totally worth it, even if they only have a limit, more limited shelf life. So after you've desoldered all of the solder off with whatever tool you have or whatever tool you choose to use, it's always best to kind of try to wiggle or pry whatever it is around. Another technique that I use is taking the pin and actually wiggling the pin back and forth inside of the hole and sometimes even heating it up to break any a uh, tiny drop of solder that's still holding it loose and then wiggling it back and forth using some sort of pry bar. And this part you have to be pretty careful because you don't want to damage the board or your component. And then solder wick comes in once you have it removed. Now that you have your component removed, you can then use the solder wick to remove any excess solder around the PCB board. Now with solder wick, it's about you lay it out flat you put your iron on top of it, and then you essentially scrape off the rest of the solder. Like so. 
it's a combination of these tools that help you to do these jobs and to make your life easier. With Solder Wick, you really have to get your technique down. It takes a long time, not a long time, but it takes a little while to get used to having the wick down and then keeping the soldering iron on the wick and then moving the wick back and forth using the iron. It's a, it takes a little while to get used to that, but it's mainly used for just cleaning up the circuit completely and completely removing any leftover solder that will be there and keeping it nice, flat, and flush. Thank you guys very much for watching. Thank you for watching this whole series. Uh, next time we're gonna be talking about tips and temperatures, different tips for soldering irons and the temperatures for different applications. And uh, I'm still gonna be doing all the regular type of content that I do, uh, all random stuff, the comparison, the mods, the repairs, and uh, just interesting things like uh, the way I told the story about how where my game collection came from. Uh, feel free to go check that out if you haven't. And uh, thank you guys very, very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.